In this video, we will integrate key clock with our Active Directory server. I have already set up the Active Directory server uh, in my AWS instance and we'll be integrating it with the key clock server. If you are not sure on how you can set up the Active Directory server, you can click on the link in the description. Now, let me log into the key clock server. Also, if you are not sure how to set up the key clock server, please refer to the link in the description. So once we integrate key clock with Active Directory server, uh, as a next step, we plan to integrate it with the Google workspace. So um, I've logged in into my key clock server and as you can see, I have landed into the master VM. So you should create a new realm for every domain that you are planning to manage using key clock server so first thing that i'll do is i will create a new realm here so let me go here and i click on create realm and here you can just give it a name so i'll get the name as coin sp and i'll click on create make sure that the key clock server is able to reach to the active directory server on the required ports for this i have already configured uh, my uh, firewall rules in aws so that this communication is allowed between key clock and active directory server so let me go to user federation and i'll set it up and we will do it uh, using ldap you can also use ldap s if you have um, set it up that's secure ldap for now, I will go ahead with the LDAP, but if you want me to do a video on how you can enable LDAP S and then integrate with the key clock, please, uh, please go into the comment section and leave a comment there. So here, the display name I'll select as uh, LDAP. Our vendor is Active Directory 2022, and then connection URL. So here I'll enter the IP address, so I'll say LDAP, and then 172.31.6.222 okay start tls uh, i'll not enable uh, use trust score spi you can leave it to default connection pooling i will leave it to default connection timeout i will not set that let's try to test connection and you can see this message that we are successfully connected to ldap that means we are going to proceed for the next step. So uh, bind type, we'll leave it to default. Bind DN, so here you have to put the DN for the administrative users from your Active Directory. And to find that detail, you can just go to your Active Directory server. And you can use this command, uh, get ad user. I will leave this command uh, in the description, so you can use it from there and let me just click on enter here this command you have to use from the powershell okay so it will show all the users that are there you can just find the user that you want to use uh, i will use this user kumar as so here is the full dn for this user so i can just maybe copy from there and let me put it in the bind dn and then you have to put the credentials so as you might be aware this credentials will go uh, over plain text because i am only doing a plain ldap integration and not the secure ldap one for now i have configured my credentials let me try to test the connection and you can see it successfully connected to ldap okay uh, edit mode i'll say read only so if you will select writable then it can also make changes in your active directory configuration uh, so for now i'll go with the read only and here you have to put the users dn from where you want to import the users so i will mission cn users dc com splitter and dc com then the other settings i'll uh, 
L dap attributes, I'll leave it at default. RD and L dap attribute, I will leave it as default. UUID, uh, I can leave as default. User object class, again, I'll leave it at default. Search scope, uh, you can leave this configuration settings as in. Import user, yes, I'll toggle it on. Sync registration, it's on, which is good. Uh, periodic full sync. So when you enable this option, LDAP will uh, do a full sync for all the users from your active directory. So I'll toggle it on for now. And uh, this full sync period is in seconds. So you will be able to change if you uh, need to change it. Just make sure that if you have a large number of users in your active directory, it will take some time in the synchronization. So make sure you select the sync period accordingly. For now, I will maybe leave it to the default only. Periodic change user sync. So if there is any changes in the user configuration in active directory, I want it to be synced with my key clock server. So I will toggle it on and I'll again leave it to the default configuration. It's a sync period in seconds. So keep it in mind. And uh, we need not enable any other option as such. So I'll just leave it here and then I'll click on save the configuration. Okay, so user federation provider is created and it should start importing the users. Let's go to the user section and see if we can see the users. So you can see the users that are imported from here. Uh, these are the users that I've configured in my active directory for testing. So we are good at this part. Another uh, important functionality that we want to use is the group sync. So you can also uh, configure it to sync your LDAP groups here, right? So to do that configuration, you need to go to mapper. So let me go to mappers and uh, you need to create a new mapper. So I'll say uh, mapper as group and uh, mapper type, right? So here I'll select group LDAP mapper. And then you need to put the group DN. Again, if you want to check the group DN, you can use uh, the command that we used last time. Only thing is you can replace uh, AD user to AD group. So that's what I'll show you for now. Okay, and here you can see it showing me all the groups. So what I will select is I have created two Active Directory groups. Let me show it to you. Yeah, so I have created a um, different OU by the name of groups. And that's where I've created two different um, groups. One by the name of IT users and one by the name sales. So uh, for this one, I will take the details as OU equal to groups. DC equal to coin sprinter and DC equal to com. Okay, uh, also I want to show you one more thing. So if you try to sync all the groups here, right? If you, uh, instead of putting this particular configuration, if you put uh, like CN equal to users, CN equal to coin sprinter, CN equal to com here, right? Then it will throw an error. So uh, for my use case, I want to use this particular OU uh, that will have my group information uh, uh, because nested groups are not supported currently by key clock so which is fine with me because my use case doesn't involve nested groups here so I will leave this configuration to this one and then group name LDAP attribute I'll leave it to default uh, this configuration also rest all looks okay yeah mode I will change to read only load groups by member attributes is okay number of oh uh, yeah we should be good to drop non-existing groups during sync yes so mm, i want any groups that are not in active directory to be removed automatically so that's why i'll toggle it on and let me click on save yeah so mapping is created successfully and it should start importing the groups if our configuration is correct. So let me go to the groups. No group yet. Okay. Let's go back to user federation and go back to LDAP. 
map first and uh, group uh, LDAP mapper. Okay, so on the top right side, you see the action sync LDAP groups to key clock, right? So let me manually do a sync of LDAP groups to key clock. Okay, so you can see this message data successfully synced. Two groups are imported. So that means that our import is successful. If I go to the groups now, I can see two groups that we had in our active directory along with the uh, members of those groups. So uh, our configuration is um, successful. We should be good with this integration. Next, we'll integrate it with the Google Workspace. So uh, I will work on that part and then I'll upload the video. I think we should be good for now. Uh, please make sure to like this video and subscribe uh, to our channel to support us. Thank you.